condors carry the power of the wind, they also carry the honor and the power of the people. The power of the condor was legendary to the native people of California. This sacred bird cleaned the land and carried spirits on its wings. For Mati Waya, a ceremonial leader and dolphin dancer of the Chumash tribe, the battle to save the California condor is a sacred duty. I'm an equal warrior, and I'll put my life on the line for that. His organization, called the Wishtoyo Foundation, has joined the fight to bring the legendary Thunderbird back from the brink of extinction. When you think of the condor and how it's been here as long as the Shumash people, you know, we, we think of how us as modern day Shumash people need to re-identify ourselves. So to see the condor soar again, it gives us hope. For many Bay Area tribes, the condor is a symbol of creation and healing. Now, it's up to mankind to heal the condor. You know, we pride ourselves as, as being sort of a temporary steward or caretaker for the birds. Biologist Kelly Sorensen and the field team from the Ventana Wildlife Society are out to perform a checkup on a captured condor. They're searching for signs of lead poisoning. Today, we have a nearly 10-year-old male California condor that was trapped a few days ago uh, so that we could take a blood sample and determine if uh, there's any lead in the blood of that bird. If there is no lead, then it'll be immediately re-released. And if there is, then it would undergo treatment with a nine and a half foot wingspan, this scavenger is the largest land bird in North America. For millennia, thousands of condors soared over a range that stretched from Canada to Mexico. But during the gold rush, they were hunted for their long, hollow quill feathers, which became prized containers for gold dust. The biggest problems uh, the condor faced over a hundred years ago when settlers first arrived to the west were shooting and poisoning. Throughout that whole entire time we've, we've now come to realize that lead poisoning has also played a significant role in the decline of the species. By the 1980s only 22 condors survived and just nine of those remained in the wild. It was then that federal biologists made the critical decision to capture the last free condors. It became quite clear that the only option was to bring all the remaining birds into captivity and start over. And since that time, captive breeding programs have successfully produced almost 300 individuals. Right now, there are about 60 condors in California, free flying. But since 1992, 15 free-flying condors have died from lead poisoning. At that rate, if left on their own, this species will not survive. We have a field crew that works incredibly hard all year round to constantly monitor birds. And the other big component of what they do is to try to trap every individual at least once a year just so that we can determine if they're suffering from lead poisoning. So where is this lead coming from? This is an x-ray of a deer shot by a lead bullet. The tiny black specks are lead fragments left behind by the slug. California condors are obligate scavengers, so they're, they're not out there killing anything. They're only eating the remains of dead animals. When an animal is shot with a, a lead bullet, oftentimes those fragments will be left behind in those carcasses. And we've found uh, evidence of fragments from rifle slugs in the digestive system of condors. To treat a condor with lead poisoning requires an aggressive medical process called chelation. So when lead enters the bloodstream, it blocks neurological receptors that control the digestive system. So literally what happens is the bird starves to death because it doesn't know that it's hungry. What chelation does is it grabs a hold of that lead and then allows the, the, the animal to excrete it out naturally. I'm introducing legislation working in conjunction with Fish and Game 
and with wildlife groups as well as hunters in California uh, to eliminate lead ammunition that we know is poisoning the condors. California Assemblyman Pedro Nava has attempted several times to pass this legislation, only to be disappointed. We now know through scientific testing that the isotopes that are found in lead ammunition are the same isotopes found in the condor's blood. We don't need to call CSI. We don't need to do any more. It's done. We have the answer. So now let's move from that and work on a solution. Hunters, just by a simple switch of the ammunition, can help be a part of this solution, and that's what I call on them to help me do. While switching bullets may appear to be a straightforward solution, hunting lobby groups such as the California Outdoor Heritage Alliance stand opposed to establishing regulations banning lead ammunition. We understand the threats facing the California condor. It's a magnificent bird, and we want to do everything we can to help out. Uh, we just would like to see an incentive-based approach tried first rather than the regulatory approach. A big issue with hunters is that non-toxic ammunition costs two to three times more than lead bullets. And there is still debate on the ballistic capabilities of non-toxic alternatives. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service recently sponsored an event to give hunters a chance to try all copper ammunition. And one group called Project Gut Pile is also hoping to change hunters' perceptions. One of the reasons that they asked me if I want to be part of it was because I hunt. But we want hunters to take a really good look at, at their uh, perspective as far as what they're actually doing out there. And if we can convince one hunter, that'll then turn to two hunters. For Anthony Prieto, making the switch to non-lead bullets was not automatic. At first, I was a little bit, you know, pessimistic. I thought, how can anything out shoot what I've been shooting? But taking it out, when that's where the real test is. It's when you go out and you physically harvest game. I mean, the animals were dead before they hit the ground. And I was sold. I want to do my part as far as when I take something from the wild, I want to leave as little impact as possible. Recently, Anthony Prieto, the Wish Toyo Foundation, and the Natural Resources Defense Council sued California Fish and Game, seeking a ban on lead bullets in condor country. We've already lost a grizzly bear, we've lost a jaguar, we've lost the wolf, we almost lost the elk and the pronghorn antelope. And this is just here in California. It's time for people to wake up, you know, to not be so selfish. I don't think that there's a hunter in California that wants to be responsible for eliminating the condor. I think when given choices, they'll make the right choices. Today, there are 289 remaining California condors, but only 138 are free flying in California and Arizona. For condor number 167, it's the moment of truth. 2.7. It's a low lead means good news, and we can let this guy free. We don't want to be doing what we're doing. We want to put ourselves out of a job. We want the condors to, to be the way they were once before and, and flying on their own, breeding on their own. One, two, three, go. Our environment needs more support. And the, the condor is an icon of that need. We honor the spirits of those that have left this world, including the condor. These mountains and hills are still shaped the same way as they were 10,000 years ago. And just like their ancestors, they'll find their way. And we recognize and reflect on the past so that we could look through the eyes of the ancestors for the future. <laughs>